Eve? The Exorcist always have. I've never liked it. I don't know why people do. Oh, wow. <clears throat> Seriously, I I don't get it. Um, well, maybe we'll have to do that. Yeah, someday. I guess we can't promise his promises. Yeah, I guess we're going to have to. Uh, I just never want to watch it again. Fuck. Um, numerous theaters stopped showing the film. I already said that. Uh, after its initial British release, including a one-year theatrical run in London, the film was initially banned on the advice of the British Board of Film Censors, BBFC, uh, Secretary Stephen Murphy, and subsequently by his successor, James Furman. <laughs> yeah, it's definitely, those names are definitely like, oh, look, it's British, British pants. Uh, while the British ban was in force, uh, the word chainsaw itself was barred from movie titles, forcing imitators to rename their films. In 1998, despite the BBFC f- ban, Camden London Borough Council granted the film a license. The following year, the BBFC passed the Texas Chainsaw Massacre for its release with an 18 certificate, and it was broadcast a year later on Channel 4. So, fuck that. Does it have to be Chainsaw Massacre? Does, does it, can, it, can it be, like, you know, can he have gardening this? tool, you <laughs> know? Or and tree, a big knife! Can he have a knife? Tree chopping device, you know? <laughs> It's just, just don't say chainsaw. It's not that hard, is it? And cue the letters from British people. <laughs> We've done like four accents already. <laughs> like, that is true. Letters that is from true. everybody. Bring them on. Yeah, just bring them on. How cartoonish were they? Did we ever figure out what our email is to send to people? No, probably not. No, no. I'll try and look it up while you're describing the movie at some point and see if we can figure that out. The Australian censors uh, refused to classify the 83-minute version. That's of the not film. a chainsaw, no. Yeah, <laughs> see, that's the thing because we don't even have it—the 83-minute version of the film in June of 1975. The board similarly refused classification of a 77-minute print in December of that year. In 1981, an 83-minute version sub- submitted by the Greater Union Organization Film Distributors was again refused registration. Although they made some dodgy movies in Australia. Yeah. Watch the documentary, Not Quite That's Hollywood. True. It's a very good documentary it talking is. about the exploitation movies of the 70s and 80s in Australia. Mm-hmm. So they made some dodgy movies, so how dare yes, you, you know. they definitely did. And now that I mentioned, no, we do have the 84 minute. Um, it's the it's the longer one. It's like five minutes longer that we don't have. Yeah. That nobody will ever see. Uh, it was Maybe later, 50, the 50th year. Maybe, hopefully. Yeah. Um, although, who would do it now? Unfortunately, Toby Hooper has passed away. His estate. I don't think they care. Do you guys like money? I agree. You're not wrong. Uh, it was later submitted by Filmways Australia and approved for an R rating in 1984. Well, good for them. It was banned for periods in many other countries, including Brazil, Chile, Finland, France, Iceland, Ireland, Norway, Singapore, Sweden, and West Germany. What a collective group of places. I know. Uh, in Sweden, it would also symbolize a video nasty. Remember those? Yeah. Uh, a discussed topic at the time. Ah. That's, I, I, I love the fact that we now can talk about those as we know what it is. Go back and watch, uh, listen to our episode about um, Last House on the Left. You'll know it all. You'll know completely what a video nasty is. Uh, for eight years after 1976, uh, it was annually reissued to first run theaters promoted by full page ads. So they definitely were cool with it by that point. Yeah. You know, yeah. A couple of years later, just like, yeah, fuck it. It's the greatest movie ever. Let's, yeah, that's what again, I mean. Just... Money. Yeah. Once you see some money rolling mm-hmm. in, all is forgiven. Who cares? Hit him again with the hammer. Mm-hmm. Well, as per money. usual, money. Horror films always make the money. International language of money. Mm-hmm. Very much so. It received a mixed reaction upon its initial release. Uh, Linda, mm-hmm. Linda Gross of the LA Times called it despicable, <laughs> and it is, and described Henkel and Hooper as more concerned with creating a realistic atmosphere than with its plastic script. Yeah. I don't know how that's an insult. They weren't trying to make Thank you. Cane. They were trying to make a scary horror film. It worked. Yeah. Looks like they did it. No um, rose butts here. No. I don't. I really don't know why that's a bad review. Um, Roger Ebert of the Chicago Sun-Times said it was as violent and gruesome and blood-soaked as the title promises. Nope. Mm. Uh, yet praised its acting and, te- acting and technical execution. I'll agree with you on that. It's not mm. blood-soaked. It's not blood-soaked, buddy. It's... It's definitely fucked up. I mean, blood soaked Violent, is in sure. there's characters that are covered in blood sometimes. Yeah. Like, one character one. is covered in blood. In a but... horror film, that's surprising. Yeah. Um, Patrick Taggart of the Austin Chronicle hailed it as the most important horror film since George A. Romero's Night of the Living Dead. At the time, I would agree with that. Yeah. Uh, Even now. Yeah. Um, it's know. definitely up there. 
Texas Chainsaw Massacre was selected for the 1975 Cannes Film Festival Directors Fortnight and London Film Festival. In 1976, it won the Special Jury Prize at the Avier... I'm not going to pronounce this right. Avoria's Fantastic Film Festival in France. Sure. So it was getting awards right off yeah. the bat. Oh, yeah. So. No, people understood that they had something here. Um, so the legacy of the film. The Texas Chainsaw Massacre is considered one of the greatest and most controversial of horror films and a major influence on the genre. The years have been kind to the film, with critics later frequently praising both the film's aesthetic quality and its power, observing that it managed to be horrifying without being a bloodbath. You'll see more gore in a Steven Seagal film. Yep. That is absolutely true. Uh, Tony Magistrate, uh, an English professor at the University of Vermont, believed the film paved the way for horror to be used as a vehicle for social commentary, describing it as cheap, grubby, and out of control. I take umbrage with that statement because George Romero did it first. In it's, the 60s. Like, it's one of the, mm-hmm. not the um, first. It said it fi- believed the film paved the way. Yeah. So literally he's saying this It is. paved the way in yeah. some aspects. It did, but, not, but it's it, not this the This says first. different things than mm-hmm. that. Like, this doesn't speak on race that did. No, this is... This, this is, on... Yeah, this is just brutality. Yeah. Man, man's brutality against man, if yeah. you will. Um, Leatherface has gained reputation as a significant character in the horror genre responsible for establishing the use of conventional tools as murder weapons and the image of a large, silent killer devoid of personality. Uh, Christopher Null of FilmCritic.com said, In our collective consciousness, Leatherface and his chainsaw have become as iconic and Freddy as his razors and Jason and his hockey mask. That is absolutely true. Plus he's more terrifying because he's a person. Uh, like well, technically Jason was too. Yeah, but... There's in supernatural fact, were, aspects to that, Jason. That's later. You can't count the sequels. you got to talk original characterization. Technically, Jason was pretty much a lot like Leatherface. Was Agreed. supposed to just be a child. Agreed, but once you catch adult. once you catch a fucking thing to the head, a machete to the head, and then you get up from that... I'm pretty confident. That goes away. <laughs> I'm fairly certain that there's probably supernatural elements by the point of Leatherface, by this point, based on the sequels. I can't remember specifically, but when we get to the sequels, I'll point them out. Mm. But I haven't seen them in a long time, so I can't even tell you. But I would guess that they would, just because that's usually what happens when you run out of ideas for a sequel. Yeah, We'll get there in a minute. According to Rebecca Asher Welsh, well, that's a name, of Entertainment Weekly, uh, it laid the foundations for the Halloween, Evil Dead, and Blair Witch horror franchises. Wes Craven crafted his 1977 film The Hills Have Eyes as an homage to, homage to Massacre, while Ridley Scott cited Hooper's film as an inspiration for his 1975 film Alien, direct, French director Alejandra Aja, I, I don't remember how that's pronounced, credited it as an early influence on his career. All of those I would understand. Mm-hmm. Horror filmmaker and heavy metal musician, and a guy we're a big fan of around these parts, Rob Zombie. Hot Topic Macho Man! Mm-hmm. Uh, sees it, yeah, really, sees it as a major influence on his work, including... Hello, Rob Zombie. That's not a... Rob that's Zombie's not, awesome. That's not a denigrated on him or... Rob. No, but just, he... Come on. He constantly has hot topics out there where you're just like, okay, and then he kind of looks like the fucking Macho Man. He dresses like Macho Man Randy Savage. <laughs> Tell us we're wrong. Um, uh, sees it as a major influence on his work, including his films House of a Thousand Corpses, The Devil Rejects, and the recently released Three from Hell. Yeah, no shit. It's almost, House of a Thousand Corpses is basically... is a shot-for-shot shot remake until the zombies show up. Yeah. Um, in 2010, total film poll, it was selected as the greatest horror film, uh, with judging panel included veteran horror directors such as John Carpenter, Wes Craven, and George A. Romero. It's arguable. I mean... You, you can make an argument. A very strong one, even. Mm-hmm. Very strong. Yeah. Uh, over the years, the film has been analyzed and studied academically for its themes of American culture, violence towards women, and mental illness. None of which I'm going to ele- even attempt to talk about because I'm not even remotely smart enough to understand it all. We're two chuckleheads. Mm-hmm. However, the film has been described as the ultimate pro-vegetarian film. <laughs> Due to its animal rights themes, um, in a video essay, film critic Ro- Rob Ager described the irony um, in humans being slaughtered for meat putting humans in the position of being slaughtered like farm animals. Director Toby Hooper has confirmed that it is a film about meat, and even gave up meat while making the film, saying, In a way, I thought the heart of the film was about meat. It's about the chain of life and and the killing sentient beings. I can see that. Writer-director Guillermo del Toro became a vegetarian for a time after seeing this film. I mean... And if you can do that to him, because he's like the nicest guy in the world. Yeah. 
You could see it, like, watching how they describe me, mm-hmm. that whole scene in the van when he's talking about how they kill the animals. Mm-hmm. Like, you can see it's just like, you know what, I love burgers, but mm-hmm. I don't know if I want a burger right now. See, this is how why I know I'm fucked up, because I'm watching them, like, eat barbecue, and I'm looking up barbecue recipes. That's I... not barbecue! <laughs> Well, we'll get there when we talk about the movie, because <laughs> um, I got to tell you, that's not barbecue. Um, well, it's barbecue. In the strictest of sense, it sensei. is technically barbecue. But I mean, I'm sure it was slow cooked in some kind of sauce, so hence barbecue. However, probably human. Um, Tastes like chicken. Yeah, <laughs> uh, you'll like the fact that I added this. The Leatherface name and gimmick were used by many professional wrestling promotions yeah. as a tribute to the film. The character was first used in Memphis and has been done in many promotions by a variety of wrestlers, including including Michael Kirshner, Rick Patterson, Brian Harris, Dennis Knight, and Ken Harper. Uh, Frontier Martial Arts Wrestling, FMW in Japan, sometimes called the character Super Leather. And one I forgot to add in here is, um, uh, God, what the hell? His name disappeared for me. Jesus. Uh Uh-oh. Uh, Terry Funk. Oh, there you go. Who uh, went by Chainsaw, Chainsaw Charlie, Charlie. Which clearly is just Leatherface. And if you just look up Super Leather from FMW, mm-hmm. because I remember watching this as a kid, mm-hmm. uh, it's just Leatherface. Yeah. It's just a guy in le- dressed as Leatherface wrestling. Mm-hmm. They had I mean, a Jason and a Freddy. They had a Jason too. and a Freddy as well. Yeah. But yeah, like the Leatherface one has been used more than all of them. Yeah. Um, according to Edwin Neal, Texas State Troopers actually shook his hand and thanked him for causing crime to drop 18%. Apparently, the message audiences took away from the movie was, don't pick up hitchhikers. It's true. You shouldn't. Although, they were asking, just come on, you mm-hmm. just one look at that guy, what are you doing? Yeah. I mean, we'll get to it in a minute, but mm-hmm. come on, guys. Uh, many comics have been, oh, sorry, the film has become a multimedia franchise. Many comics have been released over the years, uh, with the first being a very loose adaptation of Leatherface, Texas Chainsaw Massacre 3, based on the original screenplay by David Show, written by Mort Castle with art by Kirk Jarvinian. Uh, in 1995, Topps Comics released a comic entitled Leatherface vs. Jason, written by Nancy A. Collins and art by Jeff Butler, pitting him against Jason Voorhees from Friday the 13th. After the success of the remake in 2003... Several series of comics were produced, all set in the continuity of the remake. Leatherface appeared alongside Freddy Krueger in the first issue of New Line Cinema's Tales of Horror, in a story entitled The Texas Chainsaw Salesman, written by Christos Gage and Peter Milligan, with art by Stefano Raphael and Tom Feister. However, they don't cross over. Yes, in preparation for this, I read the comic. And no, they don't cross over, and I don't understand why. In 1982, short, shortly after the Texas Chainsaw Massacre established itself as a success in U.S. home video, Wizard Video released a mass-market video game adaptation for the Atari 2600. In the game, the player assumes the role of Leatherface and attempts to murder trespassers while avoiding obstacles such as fences and cow skulls. As one of the first horror-themed video games, the Texas Chainsaw Massacre caused controversy when it was released due to its violent nature, and it sold poorly as a result. Uh, of many, as many game stores refused to stock it. I'm sure those pixelated fucking things were so violent looking. It, it's pretty awesome. As such, <laughs> the game has been a rare collectible, and it's uh, if found, it sells for upward of three hundred dollars. Plus, yes, I attempted to buy one. No, I couldn't. Plus, get one. that's a thing. That's a real deal because mm-hmm. in like the fucking mm-hmm. uh, not nightmare game. Um, mm-hmm. Friday the Thirteenth game. You don't mm-hmm. play as the killer. You play as the camp counselor who's trying to get away from the killer. You so to play, play it, you also do play as Jason. Do you? Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. Like, like to play as the killer, that would be far more interesting than. Yeah. No. The 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 way they do it is actually really genius. Like I unfortunately won't play online, but I've seen how they do it. And basically, you sign in to play online, and you're playing against however many people are in the group, and. Oh, no, I'm Most not talking you, about that. Oh, not that one. Oh, the I'm video game. Oh, the NES. NES game. Oh, okay. Yeah, no, yeah, you yeah. unfortunately play as camp counselors, which is unfortunate. That's what I mean. Um, so, like, back then, to play as the but killer. But the two Atari 2600 horror games, you actually do play as the killer. Because so there's know. another one, I think. I'm not sure, but there's a Halloween game as well that you can't find anywhere but see, as well. But see, this is what I'm saying. I it's think far you play more as interesting Myers. to do that than to play Oh, as trust the... me. I really wish the NES games for all of those you did play yeah, as the thing. Because yeah, yeah, also, yeah. as somebody who owns and has finished the Friday the 13th game, it's shit. Yeah. So I would have liked to have played the killer. However, no. Uh, but, but the yeah, modern the version you can. One, yeah. I just don't like playing online. No, I'm the same way. Otherwise, I love the idea. Um... 
there have been seven more films released in the franchise, which is shocking to me. Yeah. I always thought this was one of the shorter ones. I'm wrong. They're counting remakes and yeah. prequels.